Uh, thank you very much, um, Oliver. It's very good to, to see you and I can see that you are at my home club in Nairobi as I'm sitting here um, in Paris. Yes, um, let me just correct the, um, the introduction because I work for the government, so it's important that the um, introduction is correct. I'm currently Kenya's ambassador to uh, five jurisdictions, and that is France, the Holy See, which of course is the Vatican, Portugal, Serbia, and Monaco. But before that, and why I'm very excited to be here with you all, is as Oliver has said, I enacted a number of laws while I was Minister of Environment, Water, and Natural Resources in Kenya. And this was between 2013 and 2018. The first law I enacted in 2013 was the Wildlife Act. This act hadn't been enacted or changed for about 25 years. And clearly we were seeing that poaching levels were extremely high uh, in Kenya at that time. And the penalties or law enforcement aspect of it was extremely weak. So I had the courage to introduce this law. I delivered it within six months. Of course, I had great support from uh, the president. I also had great support from the National Assembly and great support from the, uh, from the Senate. This law at that time, when it, was when it was enacted in January 2014, had the highest penalties in the world for poaching. We also uh, continued with a number of practices, which was to also educate the judiciary so that the magistrates could understand that poaching, illegal wildlife trafficking, were actually economic crimes and not just petty crimes. Fast forward to this day, uh, the current minister just reported um, recently that between tw uh, 2020 and 2021, there was 0% poaching in Kenya. And that is the poaching of the key keystone species. And that is the elephants and the rhino. Of course, we also know that the most poached um, uh, animal is the pangolin, and we still have quite a bit of work to do with that, especially working with international partners and especially the markets um, in Asia. But that is a work in, in progress. What the law also did was to recognize uh, conservation as a land use legally in our land law. The result of this has been that over 160 people with large tracts of land have now chosen to use that land or to set aside that land for migration, migratory corridors, and also for conservation. One of course, the biggest challenges we have is when we reduce the space or the habitats for wildlife, we then increase the chances of the zoonotic uh, spillovers. So, while Kenya used to have about 10% of the total land area for uh, pro as protected areas, specifically for wildlife, for forestry, it's an, it adds another 8% or so. What we now have with the private landowners, uh, individual uh, families, letting, uh, setting aside their land for conservation is that now about 20% uh, of Kenya's total land area is dedicated to conservation. We've also seen with partners, uh, international partners, that many of these uh, conservancies that we have now are run by communities, and these are communities that have lived traditionally with wildlife. So we've seen some improvements, we still have a, way, a long way to go. When it comes to issues of law enforcement, uh, again, what Kenya has done over the past several years is to work on mutual uh, legal agreements with our neighboring countries. We've also partnered uh, very importantly with Interpol. Of course, Interpol is headquartered here in France, in, in Lyon, and we work, continue to work very closely with them. But we've also worked with our partners within the African Union and also within the East African community. We have together agreed that the penalties must be, be higher and must be equal regionally. We also uh, very importantly share forensic uh, information across uh, our boundaries 
And again, we have seen that this has enabled us to protect uh, our, our wildlife. In terms of breeding, Kenya has had very successful breeding programs, especially in the rhino. Um, we've seen an increase since the, the program started maybe 25 years ago. We've seen an increase of virtually 200% uh, percent in the number of black and white rhino uh, that Kenya currently hosts. When it comes to the other challenge with issues of um, zoonotic diseases, zoonotic spillovers, is also the issue of pollution, climate change, and so on. One of the issues I was also, one of the pieces of legislation I was also successful in doing is legislating uh, one of the first climate uh, change acts in the world. And Kenya, we legislated this in uh, 2016. So it's the Kenya Climate Change Act 2016, which requires all sectors to legally reduce their carbon footprint. We've seen great success in the energy uh, sector where almost 75% of our energy use is renewable. Of course, we still have challenges in the transport sector, which is still very much fossil fuel reliant. On renewable energy, we are expanding our geothermal energy component and reducing more, uh, more of the hydro, uh, power, which we have also uh, traditionally uh, relied on. Following up on what the other speakers have said, when we look at our agriculture sector, again, because of the Climate Change uh, Act and the clauses that are binding there, uh, Kenya is reducing its, uh, it's, it's increasing its clim uh, climate smart uh, agriculture and also including, as was mentioned by Hunter and others, uh, agroecology practices, agroforestry uh, practices, uh, and so on. Hunter will not be happy to hear this, but she did not have many good comments to say about Agra, but you also know, Hunter, that Kenya is the headquarters of Agra uh, in, in Africa. And again, we work very closely with them, trying to encourage them also to disseminate uh, some of these more climate-friendly uh, uh, practices. Uh, I can uh, continue to give you more examples, but I'd, I'd like to stop there to just say that leadership uh, takes a lot of courage, uh, which we have demonstrated in, uh, in, in Kenya. We work very closely with our neighboring countries and within the scope of the African Union to share uh, examples of what it is to be, uh, to be successful. And let me just conclude by saying I think the most a courageous decision I ever made and probably the most risky, and that's why I'm sitting very comfortably here in Paris, is banning single-use plastic bags uh, in Kenya. I was just about to move to the bottles, but uh, then I was asked to come on sabbatical here, but the work continues. Thank you very much all for listening to me.